Fjorda, the last installment of Wildcard, supposedly, before the release of Arc 2. One of the biggest map created, it contains many different biomes and almost every dinosaur included in past releases. Fjorda is a vibrant place, inspired by the Norse mythology and contains some of the most unique sites where a player can build. It includes iconic places such as Asgard and Jotunheim, and there are many pre-built fortresses and castles that can elevate building creativity to all new levels. We are looking today at some of these unique locations from a PvE point of view through the filters of environment, buildable spaces and sceneries. We can find the first location in the depths of the redwoods, surrounded by beautiful giant red trees and extremely eye-pleasing landscapes. The Runheim stronghold is a pre-built castle situated at 23.3 latitude and 80.8 longitude undoubtedly one of the most dangerous areas on Fjorda, with many predators that can hit you by surprise and end your day rather quickly. The fortress is built in a circular shape, with most of the walls still intact and massive spaces to build between the inner and outer ring. The back of the structure is fairly well protected by the natural formation of the hill that takes the function of a back wall. The construction itself has many different entrances and all offer very large doorways, allowing ease of use for large dinos. The area is rich in most basic materials and offers unique views and a nearby snow connection. A word of advice for everyone interested in this beautiful stronghold. Some of the predators lurking the area comprise the Kano, which can be deadly, especially in the early stages of the game, and a sneaky Thylacolio, a giant cat with a tremendous appetite for mounted, unsuspecting travelers. Water sources are all around the area, making the stronghold quite a good fit for many different building in creative ideas. Second location visited is situated in the caves of the Vanaland East Coast. The Lindenjord Cave is sited at 28.8 latitude and 39.7 longitude, with a fairly large entrance that some of the biggest dinos can traverse with ease. The inner cave has a long corridor leading to a junction that boasts a fairly large area on the left side of the cave with natural lighting sources and a pond that can be used as a water source depending on the requirements of the build. The right side of the junction leads to the main area which has an enormous amount of space available for building. This area is mainly on two different levels, with a lower and a higher floor. The lower floor being rich in basic materials and water sources. The top floor is a massive flat landscape with vibrant colors reflecting the four season. Aside from the abundance of basic materials, the top floor has a few rare resources such as crystals and metal nodes. Both levels of the cave are well connected by paths that give comfortable access to the entire cave and are easy to navigate. The creatures in the cave are not particularly dangerous, such as echoes and dodos. However, the high-level bears found in the area can pose a fairly threatening challenge if cautionary steps are not taken beforehand. Ladies and gentlemen, if at any point you feel like you enjoy the content you are watching, don't forget you can hit the like button, the notification bell, subscribe to the channel and maybe have a few comments in the comment section and let me know what you think about this location if you have built on it or you intend to. Moving on to location number 3. The third site visited is far from the green hills of Vanaland 
and deep into the frozen mountains of Snarmere. The location of interest is the Ferkeberg Castle, a pre-built structure with breathtaking sceneries and plenty of buildable spaces. Coordinates for the castle are at 21.9 latitude and 18.9 longitude. And to get to the Ferkeborg Castle, a flyer will be the best choice considering the extremely low temperatures and many dangerous creatures living here. The main structure has a wall that needs to be reassembled with the rest of the construction being intact. In the center there is a big room that can be used as a workshop and has pre-built walls for a variety of creative ideas. The main site is connected to an adjacent structure in the mountain that leads to extra rooms fairly large that can be used as a deposit or a medium-sized dino pen. One of the main reasons to choose such a remote and dangerous location, it has to be the scenery, which is undoubtedly one of the most pleasing to the eyesight. And at number 4 we have a huge area site on the east shores of Vanaland. The Keha Maki platform is situated at 33.4 latitude and 34.8 longitude. A fairly big piece of flatland that offers extremely immersive sceneries, elevated ground and a close connection to the snow biome. If the green side of forest is what pleases your eyes, then this is the place for you. The contrast of green colors from the site, the cold colors of the snowy mountains in the back and the four season filters of the adjacent forests create the perfect harmony and make it a vibrant location for most PvE players. The advantage of being located on the shores offer the flexibility of creating unique bases that expand in the water and creativity can run wild for people that have a capable PC to stand extremely large bases. However, bear in mind, although this place is considered an easy spawn, raptors and T-Rexes are a common dino to find lurking in the areas, making it a dangerous place in the early stages of the game. And moving on to the last location. In the extreme north of the map, we have one of my favorite places, a stunning village situated on the north shore of Fjorda, with an immersive and beautiful site of the nearby dam. This astonishing location, situated at 4.5 latitude and 52.6 longitude, has an entrance to the village directly from the beachside and a path that leads uphill towards the village. The platform at the top has a huge patch of flat land that offers a lot of flexibility for creative builds. There are two pre-built houses that can be used by a small tribe with buildable foundations, inside ready for crafting stations and beds to be placed. The two houses are medium-sized and have a very cozy and unique look. Except for the occasional spawn of raptors and therizinos, this site is fairly quiet and the sound of chirping birds combined with a waterfall nearby create a beautiful and relaxing sound. This has to be one of the more astonishing and relaxing places I have seen thus far on Fjorda. And now for the bonus location. Yes, that's right, if you actually made it to the end of the video, I do have a top 6 bonus location. One that could be hidden from many people due to the very remote location at the edge of the Snyrmere Mountains, where we have the Flappy Cave. Situated at 6.0 latitude and 6.7 longitude, this area has two main advantages that can make for a very good PvE player base. The flatland surrounding the cave is of extremely large proportions and nothing can be as flat as this patch of snow. The cave itself is well lit by natural lighting sources and offers beautiful sight of the Kairuku altar. 
This site can be used as a small base, a taming pen or simply as a fancy getaway destination to relax and enjoy. Not to mention the possibility to rapidly gather numerous amounts of polymer if one is in dire need of some. However, the location is extremely dangerous, so be warned. Deuteranuses and wolves spawn here frequently and mammoths are not to be taken lightly, especially for the early stages explorer. Just a quick reminder for anyone that is still watching at this point, we do have a Discord channel and if you have built bases on any of these locations, uh, we'll be happy to see what sorts of creative ideas you can come up with. So don't forget to go there and share it with all of us. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.